Good evening to everybody. This is Link's Season Master, self-proclaimed crazy person and goofball extraordinaire. What a day. We have confirmation that not only is Smash Ultimate wrapping up, the final DLC character is Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Admittedly, I only got to see, like, the bit, the first two-minute bit with, just before Sakurai cuts off the trailer halfway through, because I was leaving for work at the time. But this, this is insane. I had been hoping for other characters, ones who I thought had somewhat more of a chance. Unlikely, but a bit more. Knights from Knights in the Dreams. <sighs> Dimitri or Morgan from Darkstalkers. Neku Sakuraba from The World Ends With You. Because as much as I wanted Sora in, as much as I think Sora would have made a great addition to the cast, it's no secret as much as people may try to pretend otherwise, it's no secret that anything copyright related that involves Disney is going to, or Nintendo is going to be a nightmare. I, it's a big part of why so much of the original roster for their first Smash is all in-house development teams, really. Stuff they had direct control over. This, getting so much third-party love, like, from, especially from Brawl onwards. But, like, I mean, you... Disney has done nothing to help live streamers or Let's Players when it comes to playing the opening songs for their Kingdom Hearts games. So, I don't know how Sakurai or anyone at Nintendo got Sora involved. It's... It's nuts. It's awesome, but it's nuts. And... I am so glad. I am really glad. The stage they have for Sora. The songs they picked. I mean, there's a few that are missing, like Rage Awakened. But... And vector that happens, but this is this is remarkable. Like, and I'm so glad that this is the note they're ending on, at least for this era of Smash. Cause I've been a fan of Super Smash Brothers since I was seven years old, and I played the game at a summer camp. It's a weird story, but I wasn't even in. But that game did a lot for me. I never would have known about Earthbound or, or Star Fox or Kirby or F-Zero without this series. And that was just the first game. Melee introduced me to, this, to Fire Emblem, to the Ice Climbers, to, to the Game & Watch series. Like, I've tried my hands at them. Some of them have aged a lot better than others. Some of them deserve uh, another chance in the limelight. Some of them are getting another chance in the limelight, thanks to Smash. But, more than anything, I became a huge Legend of Zelda fan, thanks to Smash Brothers. I got so into the series thanks to this. It was incredible. And I think more and more now, especially with Ultimate, their other companies are realizing just how fantastic a marketing opportunity the Smash Bros. series is for their properties. Like, it's taken them a long time to figure this out. Like, heck, even as recent as Smash 4, Capcom did nothing with Mega Man. But that's a whole other can of worms.
but had Smash 4 been the note we ended on? Because I would have been so disappointed. I was... The way they handled that was a bad. Like, I get they were trying to have it across two of their consoles, and having Smash on the go is a lovely idea. But I don't really think they thought it through. The way they executed it. But they learned from it. Oh, they learned from it. Ultimate has de me completely different menus. Ult has a... It did what Smash 4 should have done and had everybody, and I mean everybody. I don't know how they're going to possibly top this. Because, and I know a lot of people argue about whether Smash qualifies as a fighting game. It's got a competitive scene, so enough people see it as one that it qualifies. And they've always been hesitant to appeal to the hardcore fi fighting game fan base. But this time, they finally gave pe really gave it so that both the casual and the hardcore fans have, have something they can get out of this. I mean, Ultimate's not perfect. There's still stages that are missing from the other games. There's spirits. They're fun. A lot of fun. But I still miss the trophies, because I want those descriptions. That was incredible. I loved all that trivia. I mean, yes, we have a, having a roster this size, like the number of spirits are in would probably make that tricky, but that was a lot of the fun, having all those descriptions. And they're a little low on certain modes. Like, Sm I miss Sma Smash Run was a lot of fun from the 3DS game. And this entertaining as World of Light is, it's not quite on the level as a subspace emissary. But this DLC roster, this whole roster, and the fact that the game is as balanced as it is. I mean, from launch alone. Like, the online details were saying, like, no character won online more than 60%, and no character lost more than 40%. Like, and this is, and even without the DLC, this was one of the larger rosters in a game like this. Like, I think one of the largest officially published games fighting games had over before this probably I don't remember the name but I remember looking it up and it was like 120 something maybe even 200 I remember but I watched a little gameplay footage and dang some of those fighters looked broken some in one direction some in another yeah this is really balanced even some of the weak like the more flawed characters and this is going to be a lot of fun. having Sora like the Kingdom Hearts series has a lot also has a lot of issues much like Nintendo but this I remember when I had a chance finally to watch the full trailer like the full version along with where Sakura has commentary, which I gotta talk about that too. Like, it's just how I I was trying to both cry tears of joy and you and whoop with ecstasy, like with outright joy. Like, cry tears of joy and whoop with excitement at the same time. It was. I don't know. And especially, like, and I know, and I'm, Sakura is also not perfect as a developer. Uh, he's, he's often made mistakes with previous entries, and <sighs> I've also got issues with Nintendo. Especially with how they've treated their fans, and I'm gonna be honest, 
if it weren't for Smash Ultimate, I would not own a Switch. So, I mean, I tried playing Odyssey with some friends, and having the idea of all this stuff portable was entertaining, but I feel like they didn't... I was afraid they hadn't learned anything from the Wii U. Or heck, I was afraid they hadn't learned anything from the GameCube era. Smash Ultimate proved to me that they are willing to try to learn. They still got a ways to go. I mean, Miyamoto definitely needs to learn that you can, that you don't just need new gimmicks as an, if you want to make new games in a series, you can have more stories and a larger roster too. It doesn't just have to be gameplay gimmicks. But yeah, I, I also have learned like how much soccer I had to fight to get just a me costume of Gino from Super Mario RPG. Like, just to get that alone. Like, he had to fight for that. That ain't right. But, it's clear he wanted, just from that interview, like, the bit he did today, he wanted Sora in, just as much as the rest of us. So yes, it hasn't been an easy fight, and the Switch has got issues, Ultimate's not perfect. But it's one of the, but it's one of the best, but it's proof, especially with all the feedback that he, like, what's trending on Twitter right now, that this is definitely one of the, not only the most successful but most well done video game collaborations ever. These companies need to take notes, not just of how great marketing this is for their own properties, but how much people genuinely love it when these companies come together and work together. I got, take a look at Project Cross Zone. I don't know who half, more than half those characters were, or, and some of those I did, I. Prior to that game, I didn't really care. But Project Cross Zone made them so endearing. And it was just fun gameplay that I wanted to look them up, even if they were part of genres I didn't really care for, like horror and whatnot. Smash has done that too. And I think companies are starting, really starting to realize this. That they, if they're going to do a crossover game, they have to put in effort. And they can't be afraid of seeing their own characters get their butts kicked too. Ult Marvel MK Marvel vs. Capcom Ultimate, those trailers uh, Disney apparently dictated that the Marvel characters could not be shown in the trailers losing to Capcom characters. Capcom could be shown losing to Capcom, Marvel could be shown losing to Marvel, but you couldn't have Marvel losing to Capcom and that does that a good crossover does not make. Here You've seen characters who do well in their own trailers, and they, or sometimes even don't do well in their own trailers, to showcase like Mega Man in the Sweet Smash 4 version, showing how he got defeated. But they also show their, but they have no problem showing them get their butts kicked in other trailers, and sometimes showing them shining in other, in other characters' trailers too. And there's, there's not really favorite, like true, true favoritism here. They, they try to be as fair as they can be. And that is what really makes for good, compelling crossovers like this. I'm hoping, going forward, these companies will learn to take notes from this. They'll learn not to be so, make the, getting deals for this sort of thing so ridiculous. There's hope. This game, and seeing Sora being the, f the note we end Smash Ultimate on. This series that's meant so much to me for 21 years. Seeing it end on this now. Like Kingdom Hearts itself. Even when there's plenty of darkness and problems and issues. There's also just as much hope in life that things can change. That life will change. And that everything can improve. So. It's in Sakurai. And to everyone else who is involved in making this possible. To all the effort and hours you've poured into this game. To 
for convincing me to get Smash Ultimate in the first place, for continually deliver that this labor of love, one that I still play from time to time, even with my <sighs> drifting Joy-Cons that I've now had to try to get some Pro Controllers for. Even with us all its faults. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Until next time.